It's time now for Ankansu. And this is where Britain's top commentators speak out on controversial issues without the fear of the cancel culture sweeping the rest of the media. From migrants to food banks, newly elected Tory deputy chairman Lee Anderson has rocked the jerry political discourse in this country. And he's continuing to earn his moniker as Westminster's toughest talking MP after calling for the return of the death penalty. Speaking to The Spectator this week, Lee said, Nobody has ever committed a crime after being executed. You know that, don't you? 100% success rate. And that's not new, by the way. His position is not new because on this show, a couple of weeks ago, he said that the Afghan monster Lorangang Abdulrahimzai, a triple murdering asylum seeker who evaded authorities by posing as a 14-year-old schoolboy, deserved the death penalty too. He's a creature, he's not a man. He's a creature that's, that's murdered abroad. He's come here, he's told lies. It's, it's, been, it's been put in, in foster care. It's cost the British taxpayer thousands and thousands of pounds. And now we're going to put him in prison for 20, 20 odd years. It's going to cost the British taxpayer thousands and thousands of pounds again. That's not the answer. And I, you know, I think the answer is, and I'll say this with a heavy heart, it's probably at the end of a rope. I, I believe in the death penalty for cases like this. Now, Calvin McKenzie, predictably, there has been utter, complete and... Uh, well, I'd call it confected outrage. Confected outrage today from the political and media establishment because they want to bring Lee Anderson down. But you actually agree with them, don't you, Calvin? I, well, I've always believed in the death penalty. And actually, in his, it's a stunning interview, by the way, the like of which uh, I very much doubt many other Tory MPs would like to go publicly on it, but they probably believe it in their hearts. Is he talks about... People say, well, you can make mistakes. And he's saying, well, not with video, you can't. And the case that he cites, of course, is the dreadful case, the dreadful Islamic murder of uh, Lee Rigby, the, um, the, the soldier in Woolwich, uh, in which the murder is captured uh, on uh, CCTV. And he says, under those circumstances, why should those guys, uh, one in particular, be given... The, the rest of their lives in a rather nice cell, three meals a day, having butchered in such a vile way, and it based on uh, based on kind of ISIS kind of thought process. So what would be wrong in that case? Why would anybody want to keep that person alive? Now, I often hear the case that actually it's a moral issue. We do, the, those that kill, should not be killed because it is fundamentally wrong. We don't have the right to take away somebody's life. I, I, I disagree with that. And not only that, I see lots of examples. There seems to be more and more examples today of shocking, shocking murders where, no, where actually when you say to somebody, that's 30 years, what does that really mean to them? You know, what, what does that really mean to society? Has society got its revenge? Now, in the court case, you have impact statements now. Mm -hmm. Why can't we have impact statements where two things happen? Supposing in the impact statement, the actual mother, the father, the brother, the sister said, actually, we would like to see that person die for this crime, right? Or say, instead of 50% off, you're going to get 10% off or 2% off. I think that the families who are most effective, who have to live with this tragedy in their hearts and in their minds for the rest of their life, should have a vote. But look, Lee Anderson has said a lot of things which are really quite, quite, quite incredible. Um, mm. I mean, for instance, he also makes the point about benefits. He said, I get attacked morning, noon and night. These are, these are really vile vile socialists, right? I, I, they, should, they should be dissociated by Starmer, but I doubt whether they will. And the point he makes is that I have raised two children as a single household. I had to flog a car because I couldn't afford to run it. I, I, I didn't, I had my last five quid, had to go into the gas meter, essentially. He said, he's, he's coming from the position, you couldn't be more skint than me. So don't Dennis. try and tell me when I, when I exactly. turn around and say- And he worked seven days a universal week. Universal credits to Sorry. He works. Well, I was just going to say, he worked seven days a week during that tough period. Not only did he sell his car to walk to work, he was working seven days a week. But, Carmen, just on the death penalty, what has fascinated me today is if you watch any of the MSM coverage, you would think that he was spouting a fringe view, a view maybe that 5% of Brits might agree with, for example. A YouGov poll just last month, Carmen, and by the way, this is not... Uh, 
an outlier. This is what all of the polling shows. But a YouGov poll last month found that 52%, so the same percentage of Brits who, who voted for Brexit, think the death penalty should apply in cases of multiple murder. So Lee Anderson is speaking for the majority of the country. Well, of course, we, we aren't allowed, we aren't effectively allowed to have a death penalty in an odd way because we, we can't even send back um, uh, illegal migrants, illegal migrants to countries um, where a death penalty is carried out. And that, by the way, can be the United States, unbelievably, right? But it's certainly the whole of the, whole of the Middle East, et cetera, right? So we can't get rid. So if somebody comes and murders here, if they come from Iran and they've got some children here, we can't send them back. It, it, these are Im, Im, impossible things. And what Lee Anderson has done, and I, I do congratulate him for I don't agree with everything he said, but I do congratulate is he brought this big issue uh, into the spotlight. Because yep. this won't go away now. No, it won't. He also has won't. almost certainly meant that that the constituents of Ashfield will, in fact, actually probably more likely vote for him than Indeed. in other red wall seats where Indeed. the, where and the, that's where why... the other MPs are much more no, liberal. Couldn't agree more. And that's why Sunak needs to stand by him. Calvin McKenzie, thank you so much. Come and have a great week and we will speak on Monday night.